Okay, so in this next problem, we've got a pulley and that is connected to two masses and they're at the same height uh, and one mass is uh, 1.2 kilograms and the other mass is uh, 3.2 kilograms so that would be uh, 3.2 kilograms now essentially obviously gravity is going to be pulling down on both we'll write a big M because this one is bigger I think it's pretty obvious that the um, the big one here let me let me erase this a little bit uh, here oops The big one is going to go down, and the little one is going to go up. So let's put the force vector here on this guy. And uh, this one has a force on it as well. And um, so this force of tension is going to be the same, right? Because it's the same rope. So uh, what is this force? We're going to have to figure this out. We're going to have to figure out the, the well, specifically, actually, th this force is going to cancel itself out. But uh, for, the, for the whole system. So let's make a path here. Since, this is gonna, since the big one here is going to go down, We'll make a path going this way, and we'll say we'll state that's positive. So essentially, if I redrew it right like this, and we said this is the positive direction, here is the 1.2, and here is the the 3.2, and obviously we have uh, gravity pulling this way on this guy and we have gravity pulling this way on this guy now all I've done is I've simply you know changed the look of it such that uh, it's all horizontal but this makes no sense really because gravity isn't acting horizontally I just wanted to straighten out the path so that you could see that these two M's MG's are fighting each other and of course the big one is going to win so the acceleration in this case right is in the direction of the, this arrow so again if we do some of the forces is equal to the net force along this path and the path being right along here then we could say alright well this little mg on this side is a negative little mg and then we've got positive FT here, this one, and then on the other side, this FT is going in the negative direction, and so that's why I stated that the, the two FTs cancel each other out, because it's an internal force. So we're not dealing with the individual free body here, we're dealing with the free body diagram of the system, which includes the two masses. So now, um, I have plus, right, because this big mg here. And so this all is going to equal the mass of the system times acceleration. Okay, so we can now uh, factor out g here. So essentially, if I rearrange the order, right, I mean, it's just negative little m plus the big M uh, times g equals m cis a. And then, of course, I can, I'll just rearrange this because I don't like the way that looks. I'll just go big, big M minus little m times g. And then m cis, m cis is simply uh, little m plus big M 
So I'll divide this side by m cis and divide this side, and I'll get this equals a. So now I can plug in my values. Uh, it was here they are here. So uh, 3.2 minus 1.2 times g all over 3.2 plus 1.2 equals a. And if we plug that through our calculator, so I got uh, 4.45 meters per second squared for the acceleration. So now I know, if I draw this whole thing one more time, I know that the little mass is going to accelerate up at this acceleration and the the big one is going to go is going to accelerate down at this acceleration okay the other thing that i know is that um, they are given in the question they are both 1.6 meters above the ground so essentially, I mean, the little guy's going up, but the big guy is going down for 1.6 meters. So this whole system is going to accelerate for 1.6 meters. And what we'd like to know is what's the final velocity when the big guy hits the ground here? Now, if you think of it, since they're connected with a rope which doesn't stretch, then the final velocity of this guy, of the big guy, is going to be the same velocity of the little guy. But of course, the directions are going to be opposite. In other words, the little guy is going to be at the top with a final velocity. And the big guy is going to be at the bottom with a final velocity going down. So the question is, what is that final velocity? And I can, we can figure that out by doing something like this. We could say final velocity squared is equal to 2AD plus VI squared. Now, the initial velocity here, of course, is 0, so it cancels out. And so we can say that the final velocity is equal to the square root of 2A delta D. And so, therefore, we'll say 2 times 9.8 and delta D being 1.6 meters. And we'll plug that through our calculator. Actually, correction, this is not 1 point, this is not 9.8. The acceleration was right here. It was 4.45, so let me fix that. So it's the square root of 2 times 4.45 uh, from there. And now we multiply that by 1.6. And now let's put that through our calculator. So we got an answer of approximately 3.8 or 3.77 meters per second. That's our final velocity. Now, that final velocity, remember, it's for this guy going down, but also it's for when it hits the ground, right? And it's also for this guy going up. Now, at that point, after that point when the big guy hits the ground, there's no more tension in the rope, so the big mass cannot pull the little mass up anymore, and so the acceleration instantly um, uh, doesn't go to zero, but rather now the little mass is simply under the influence of gravity going up. So it essentially becomes a problem where the little mass has an acceleration of negative 9.8, but it also has an initial, uh, not sorry, not final, that should be, let me fix that, an initial velocity up of, uh, 3.8 meters per second. So the question is, so as it stands now, 
the little mass has gone up 1.6 meters as this one, as the big one has come down 1.6 meters. So how much further does the little guy go up simply due to its initial velocity being tossed up and then only with gravity? So now it becomes a much simpler problem. So essentially now we, we, we could say delta d we, we want to find delta d, right? But we have our initial velocity and we have acceleration. And so we could use this equation again. We also have one more thing which is implied. And that is, you know, at the top, I mean, this is kind of in the way, but let me kind of draw this situation again, right? So we have the little mass now. It goes up for 1.6 meters. And then it goes up some more. And we're trying to figure out what this delta D is right now. But in this location, the acceleration was equal to uh, positive 4.45 meters per second squared. And in this region here, the acceleration is equal to negative 9.8. But see, at the top here, which is its maximum height, our final velocity is going to be 0. And so that's what's missing. Our final velocity is 0. So now, if you look at this, we can use this equation again. v final squared equals 2a delta d plus vi squared. And now we solve for delta d. So I'll go v final squared minus v initial squared divided by, and divide both sides by 2a. And that's equal to delta d. Now my final velocity is 0 squared minus my initial velocity, which I have calculated as 3.8 squared divided by 2 times negative 9.8. And so if I plug this through my calculator, I get an answer of 0 0.73 meters. So now all I have to do is add this to the 1.6 that it initially, or that it went up here, uh, accel accelerating. And now I know this one is going to be uh, 0 0.73. And so when I add these two up, I get my answer. And understand here that this, this 0.73 meters was under the acceleration of gravity uh, pulling it down. But this 1.6 was under the acceleration of the other mass pulling it up. Okay, so now we've got, uh, when we add up the two values, our total ends up being uh, like something around 2.3 meters. And so that's the total that was equal to uh, 0.73 plus 1.6. There is one gotcha, or something we need to be really careful of here. And that is, I'll, I, once again, I have to draw this diagram again. This, where is this 2.3 meters from? So this is how we started out. Here's the ground. This distance is 1.6 meters. Now, remember, uh, maybe, I, let me, maybe I'll draw it again, because I'm going to going to need more space above, so I'll go like this. OK, so there's, there's the two masses. And then here's the 1.6 meters. Now, therefore, this goes down, right? This guy goes down. This guy goes up. But for another 1.6, right? And then. It was another uh, 0.73 until it gets to the maximum height. So when I added these two up, I got 
2.3 meters. But the question's actually asking how high above the ground here did the smaller mass reach? And of course, when I add this 1.6 here and this 0.73 here, that gives me 2.3, but that's only from here to here. I still have another 1.6 that initially, it, that was its initial height. So now I have to go 2.3 plus 1.6, and that's going to give me 3.9. Uh, uh, so so 3.9 meters is the height that it reaches um, above the ground. That's its final height. Now, remember, there is one other piece of information that they do give in the question. And it says that the pulley is 4.8 meters above the ground. So essentially, you can be guaranteed that the uh, small mass is not going to hit that pulley because it's, the pulley is above its maximum height. Okay, So that's the solution to that question. So thanks.